Okay, Bumper's looking Still for another long free charge kill. Way to go. He's hiding around oh, the corner. The shatter. Oh boy. Here we Bumper. go. What is he doing? He does it right now. Goodbye, good night, Element Mystic. Not on this push. Says Bumper. Kills two with a charge. Champion, Tank, Chad are all a few things you could call Park Sang Bum, but most will call him Bumper. Get in from the back, the shatter comes down! This guy has been doing this for ages, and still people don't look both ways. Cooper locks him in the South Barrier South. That's a huge the bomb coming from John. Oh my god, Miguel! He does it again! The Korean Flex turned main tank was born on August 5th, 1999. Like many other Korean gamers, Bumper spent much of his time playing League of Legends with his friends in PC Bangs. But it was during one of these trips where Bumper happened to catch a glimpse of his friends booting up another game, a colorful team-based shooter. Of course I'm referring to Overwatch, and from there quickly grew obsessed with the game. <laughs> It did not take long for Bumper to shoot up the ranks of Overwatch, and while everyone today knows him for his chad-tastic Reinhardt play, at the time, he primarily played Reaper. His in-game name is actually based off his love for the hero, taking the purr from Reaper and adding the bum from his own name, Sungbum, to create Bumper. Eventually, Bumper would take up the shield and switch to primarily playing Reinhardt in ranked ladder, and he continued to rise in rank, eventually attracting the attention of a new Korean team looking to rebuild after a disastrous run in Apex Season 1, Runaway. Bumper joined as their main tank. Bumper, alongside his new teammates like Kaiser, Haxel, and Stitch, continued to have breakout performances throughout Apex Season 2, competing and beating the best teams in the Korean scene. The young roster's feats during this tournament were all the more incredible considering that for most of these players, Bumper included, this was their first experience playing in an offline LAN tournament. <laughs> But despite their mercurial rise, Runaway would ultimately fall to Lunatic High in the Grand Finals. The following season, Apex Season 3, was the lowest point for Runaway. And it's no surprise that many of their rosters struggled during the time of their greatest hardships. Bumper felt this season was particularly difficult, as much the team knew going into the following season that they would not be able to replicate their Season 2 success. But even so, they still performed worse than they expected, being eliminated from the tournament in the group stages with a 9th to 12th place finish. There were many internal issues facing the team, and at one point, team owner Runner was contemplating to disband the team. But as we all know the story of Runaway, they would redouble their efforts and come back stronger than ever in the final season of Apex. With Runner leaving the main support role to fill the coach position meant that Runaway needed a support player. Bumper stepped up for his team and shifted from main tank to support, and he excelled at it, playing a high level and proficient Lucio, while Tizzy and Janu took over as the new tank line. Although ultimately, they lost yet again in the finals to the emerging GC Busan. Shortly thereafter, the victors were picked up by an Overwatch League organization and became a part of the London Spitfire, while the runners-up, Runaway, were left in the Tier 2 scene. Runaway may have missed their chance at playing on the world stage, but would continue to soldier on to the first season of Contenders Korea. Along with some minor roster changes, Bumper would shift back to his preferred role as main tank. Going into Season 1 of Korean Contenders, most of the widely known Korean talent had moved on to the Overwatch League. So, in theory, Runaway should have no trouble winning, right? On paper, shouldn't they be the best team in Korea? Some of the roster thought the same, and why wouldn't they? After all, they just finished second in the biggest Overwatch championship in Korea. 
Perhaps it was a bit of arrogance or a mentality issue seeing their friends and rivals playing at the highest level while they were stuck in the Tier 2 scene. Perhaps Runner having to leave for his military service dramatically impacted team culture. Regardless of the exact reason, Runaway would finish their run in Season 1 of Contenders Korea in the quarterfinals, falling to X6 Gaming, who would go on to be the Season 1 champions. The second season of Contenders Korea would conclude before the start of the next season of the Overwatch League. If Runaway wanted their shot at playing in the league, they would need their first championship win, making Contenders Korea Season 2 crucial for the team. Runaway immediately started the season strong and carried their momentum all the way to Grand Finals against Kongdu Panthera. Kongdu Panthera with two members left alive! Can they actually extend this? Oh my god, the mic's on the side, side it's not enough! Decay. It's OT not enough! OT is gonna plummet, and that just should be the end! Runaway, they finally got it! The third attempt! They get the championship win! Finally, they had done it. While Bumper may not have been part of their Apex Season 1 roster, he was an integral part of the Runaway family for both his flexibility, aggressive tank play, and team combo-oriented playstyle. His contributions to the team would only become more crucial to their future success. Following their win in Contender Season 2 and the 2018 Overwatch World Cup, Runaway would defeat Team South Korea, the Overwatch World Cup champions, in a thrilling show match that more or less serves the final proof that Bumper and his teammates were more than capable of playing at an Overwatch League level. Unlike the previous year, by the end of 2018, Runaway had several offers from various Overwatch League teams and orgs. They would play in the Overwatch League. It was just a matter of finding the right fit. The Vancouver Titans were that right fit, as the entire roster was signed to the team as announced by the team's general manager, Flowervin, on stream. Since the initial rumors of their signing to the end of the first stage of Season 2 of the Overwatch League, we've seen the Titans are bringing Runaway's dominance back into the league, finishing as the champions and the highest seeded team in the entire league, for the time being. In the midst of the tank-heavy GOATS meta, Bumper plays a very aggressive ride, to put it mildly. Even with Zen GOATS being one of the more popular variants of the ever-persistent team comp where pins leave you open to Discord Orb of the enemy Zen, Bumper continues to charge forward bravely and without concern, though sometimes his gambits fall through. But more times than not, he manages to land the charge and can swing fights for his team, but his contributions are not solely all his own. His performance is in part thanks to the investment by his team. A key part of the Vancouver Titans' successes has been the combo alt charge potential of their Rhine and Zarya. Given how aggressive Bumper is, the Titan Zarya is almost always at full energy, with every bubble on Bumper getting popped instantly. The pair also heavily utilize the ulti chain combo they have. For example, the NYXL use a three piece wipe, grab, and to self pair with Shatter to remove all barriers, whereas the Titans use Shatter to build grab, then grab to build another Shatter. An example of this is their match versus the Shock on King's Row. Walking into the team with a Shatter and Grav in hand, the Titans first throw out the Shatter on a Hill Mary. After it is blocked, the Shock focuses on Seo Min Su, trying to prevent the Grav, knowing that Shatter is gone. He manages to get his Grav off, and Bumper starts swinging to the Grav, going from 50% alt charge to 100% in about 4 seconds. The Shock are completely caught off guard by how quick Bumper builds on their Shatter and gets Shatter self-destructed. And that combo of alts is how the Titans won King's Row. Bumper's hyper-aggressive tank play keeps supports like Slime very busy with supporting him. The entire team works to keep Bumper alive, and in turn, he repays them by causing pure chaos. And in the midst of chaos, the Titans claim victory. While his aggression does not always work out for him, Bumper's record of stellar set of performances speak for themselves, and with his team now touted as the best in the Overwatch League, has grown substantially since their heartbreaks of Apex past. With the meta continually focused on tank heroes, Bumper is likely to continue to see lots of stage time, and all the while, we await to see more of his antics. If there's something that you guys learned from stage 1 that you guys could implement it into stage 2, what would it be? Uh, 